I need to get this bit to come out on the second floor. Okay, now I'm going to put the patch panel in. Um, it's a little bent because it is so thin and I got it on Taobao for a very cheap price. Uh, but I think it will work. Now I'm going to add these jacks to the cables. They are a bit pricey, but they're really good. Okay, now let's test it. Okay, now I just have to test all the pairs, make sure I got all the wires right. Okay, looks good. Now for the third floor.
Okay, and their floor is good also. Usually I just label everything in English because it is fun as an English speaker but as um, my business is growing and maybe someday I'll hire people and they might not read English or they can understand it so I think I should be more careful these days and label it in both in Chinese and English so I'm going to put labels on these cables and uh, in both languages uh, just in case someone walk uh, some maybe someday someone work here or maintain something you never know who's end up working on these cables and it's always a good idea to put labels on it because you think you will always remember what is what but ended up you forget what is what so it's better to put labels on it so that to to keep everything neat tight Okay, now I'm going to do that. I already connected to the Bluetooth on my uh, pr printer. In cable management, there is different schools of thought as to Velcro or zip ties. Different people square by it in different applications. The rule of thumb I learned is Velcro whenever it's a data line attached to a fixed object. I always use zip ties for power line management since if it starts flopping around, it could spark and catch fire. And if the cable is mounted on a card like my mobile workstation, or a 3D printer, Velcro tends to work loose, but this is data and it's not being moved. And there's a really good chance I'm going to want to change things around at some point, so we're going to Velcro things. If you decide to use zip ties for something, make sure they're cut absolutely smooth so you don't scrape up your arm reaching in and around them. Okay, I've got this 12 volt backup battery. If uh, I lose power, this should last an hour for my router, my NAS, and my modem. Last but not least, I'm going to plug in the IP camera. always a good idea to have an IP camera in on or on your network or server cabinet it's obviously a perfect target for troublemakers so you'll want that video uploading off-site I stream to a cloud service so one copy on the Synology NAS and mirror the files from there to an enormous off-shelf VPS and of course always wear clothes in here physically disable the audio and never enter passwords where the camera can see because really I don't consider any IP camera that is an air gap to be secure. As a rule of thumb, assume all guns are loaded, all AC lines are carrying power and all cameras are streaming live to millions of viewers on YouTube. 
I'm using a small and this interruptible power supply. That means that even if someone flips the circuit breaker to the room to kill the power, I'll still have video. The Synology router has dual WAN, so we'll set up 4G format later, just in case someone gets killed and cuts our fiber to kill our camera upload. Now that everything is wired in on the second floor, I'm going to go back to the first and third floors. I would just like to take a second to tell you about MakerBox. For this video, they sponsor my shirt by donating a thousand dollars to help Becky Button. Remember the American Maker girl in the horrible car accident? She's learning to walk again and should be okay, but that donation really means a lot and says a lot about the folks behind MakerBox. So let me explain what they offer. Once you get your 3D printer, what material you print with is probably the largest variable. There are dozens of different materials and thousands of different formulations and colors. Buying full spools is expensive and wasteful because it's way more than you need to test the filament. One of the best ways to see which filament fits your needs and works well in your printer is with MakerBox. Every month, they'll mail you a box of the most popular and useful materials from the top manufacturers. You'll be able to dial your printer in to use them and know which fits your needs the best. It starts at $19 a month. Their link is in the description box. And please thank them for donating to help Becky. Okay, I've got a Wi-Fi access point on the first and third floor. They are attached to the router on the second floor. Let's take a look at our network in the Synology web app. You can access it on your phone also, but I don't like putting any sort of root passwords into my phone. Too hard to secure. Looks good. This video was a little different. Do you like household stuff? Let me know in the comments. Until next time, remember, if I can do it, anyone can do it.